Thank you for the time. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Okay. So uh, we're going to continue. Please. Thank you. Mr. President, I have on uh, discussion library update. And I ask Ms. Moment to come forward, please, because we were working on the situation, trying to uh, 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 deal with the, uh, the wrongful, uh, I guess, the illegal hiring of a library director where the job was not posted properly and everything. And, you know, the county continued to put over a million dollars in the library. And as uh, uh, this moment, to please come and give us an update on how everything stands. Thank you so very much, Supervisor Stokes, and to all the supervisors, thank you. As of today, we are still waiting for EEOC to respond. The week, this weekend, I received a copy from my attorney stating that the library's attorney would like to offer me $10,000 to leave. Ms. Callum. My question is, uh, Mrs. Mahoney has hired an attorney. Are yes. In some type of litigation? Let me check with Peter on that. Peter. Um, Ms. Mahoney has hired an attorney, and that attorney is working with the attorney for the library board. Those are separate attorneys from us as board legal counsel, the library actually has insurance and it has attorneys paid for through the through its insurance to represent them. And in fact, we've met with them and we can uh, update you in the executive session as to our meeting with the insurance company's attorneys where we expressed um, uh, some concern on behalf of supervisors who had expressed concern to us. There's nothing improper with Ms. Moment addressing this body if she chooses to do so. Okay. Thank you. All right. I would like to say this. I'm not here to plead for any change of leadership. I'm here to plead for the fact that the hiring process is wrong. And you can sit back and say, well, she was the best candidate. And I believe in the best person winning. But I don't believe in being denied equal and fair opportunity to apply for the position. Not just me. There are other employees that were denied. There were other citizens who were denied. So I ask you today to please, please, somebody needs to conduct an investigation into the hiring process of the Jackson Heights Library System. I've been here 23 years. And I can leave today. But I have an employee here, Celeste, and so many others are saying, Charlotte, don't go. We're going to be lost. They're going to do us worse than they did you. Don't go. So I'm here not to just plead for Charlotte, but there are other employees. And they deserve a fair and equal chance to apply for any position. And, and you know, you are the funded authorities, right? And you hire board members who make these decisions. But there are board members, and I'm not going down, I'm not cracking board members. But there are board members that's been on that for years. I've never heard them speak. Never heard them speak. They might do. But we need board members who are made aware of the dynamics and the logistics of running a public library. Not just because one board member, the president of the board, is a past librarian, and whatever she says, everybody agrees. So again, that is my plea. And there are other things that you will find out if you did an investigation. No. I'm going to say this and then I'm going to sit down. 
on February 27th, this past year, I was in my office. My telephone rang. Ding, ding. Hello. This is Sean. Ms. Bowman? Yes. You don't know me, but I'm a human resource person from Hattiesburg. Okay. What do you want I said, okay. Ah, and I know I shouldn't be telling you this, but I'm going to tell you this. Okay. Who are you? You don't know me, but I know of you. Hattiesburg, Mississippi. I don't know anything about Hattiesburg. I just wanted to let you know that. There are people within your system who wants to take you down. Okay, okay, ma'am. And they're board members. Okay, ma'am, okay. I'm still saying this gotta be a joke. How do you know that, ma'am? Because I have received documentation. Okay, ma'am, I tell you what. Why don't you fax them to me? I knew this would shut up. Fax them to me. <coughs> Okay. Told my fax number. My fax machine started. I'm pulling out letters from a super, uh, supervisor here at the library. I'm hearing from a couple of board members. All of this. I go, oh, I could hardly sit there. The first thing I thought about, I, I got to go somewhere. And she said, oh, before you leave, are your cameras working? What cameras are you talking about, man? Your security cameras. So they've been down on for a couple of months. You know why? Why? An employee sabotaged them. Go check and see. And I'm like, this is crazy. Oh, and you know that door that's in the children department? Yeah, it's an alarm door. It's been disalarmed. How do you know this, ma'am? An employee did it. There's a conspiracy in this moment that they're going to make sure you don't get that job. What job are you talking about? Carolyn McCallum will soon be leaving, the director, and they want to make sure you don't get it. What? I, I don't worry about threats because I think the work I've done speaks for me. I was fair about everything, but I got up and went straight to the attorney, and he said these are grounds for termination because the person who sent this information Send it on the ladder here from the Jackson Heights Library System. Defamation of my character, everything. And he asked that we start an investigation. I did the investigation because my supervisor said, let's investigate. We got recorded statements. You just would be surprised at things that's been going on. And I went downstairs to see if the cameras, yes. I went over and saw the security alarms had all been pulled out. And this had been going on for months. And we thought it was something wrong with the security piece. But I'm going to take a seat. But I asked again, please, please, for the sake of all employees at the Jackson Highs Library, somebody please come forward and do an investigation. Now, Ms. Uh, Thank you. Ms. Uh, your main concern was that the job was posted with a date when it would close. Yes. And they're going to close it before that date that was posted for it. Could you explain that to me? How did you see it? We received a notice on June the 6th that we received a notice from our human resource that the job had come available and that the deadline date was August the 1st. My HR person came in and said, did you get this? I said, yes. August the 1st. Well, we knew that we had at least a month or so to do it. We were busy, at least I was very busy trying to get our director who was leaving to get a going away celebration for her that was going to be on the 25th. 25th. On the 24th, we went downstairs to decorate, and we were told we could not go into the meeting room. I said, well, we don't have a June board meeting, so why the board members here? They said, well, there's a special call meeting. Special call meeting. Usually you put up special call meetings and let us know. So we said, oh, okay. So I asked 
well, what is the meeting about? And he said, they're going to select an interim. Oh, okay, okay. Because I had asked initially to the president, what was the procedures? And she said, do you want to apply for the position? I said, yes. She said, well, you can't be interim. I said, well, you know, I'm second in charge. Whenever this person leaves, I'm always behind. She said, yeah, but you can't be interim if you go apply. I said, well, I'm applying. So I knew that they were going to get an interim. Okay, that's, that's fine. So we all waited until they left so we could go in and decorate. Well, I was, one of the board members called me, and she said, do you know, we thought we voted for an interim. And we're going to go, and we're going to ask to go back into an executive session to rescind this as soon as the party is over. And she asked me to bring, she said, we thought, we were told that the deadline date had changed. Well, you just don't change it, just change it. You don't have to give the public knowledge that the date has been changed. Because we're all thinking that it's August the 1st. It was not changed. They just hired who they wanted to hire. And the board member said, well, I'll tell you what. We're going to go and talk to the president and ask her, can we go in the same session? And she did. And when she came back out, she said, she said, no, we can't do that. Well, that's another thing. No chairman has the right to say what you can't do. If there are a group of board members who want to meet, they can do it. You ask for the chairman to agree with you, but if they don't, you have a right to do it. But no fail. She said, we can't do it. She said, we can't meet. So it went on and on and just, you know, it got to a point, like I said, I tried. You know, we employees who decided to protest. Why August the 1st? Why didn't you just adhere to August the 1st? And if you wanted to hire somebody else, why didn't you just go to do it? Thank you so much, Ms. Wong. Please, could I speak, sir, for just one minute? Just hold one second, please. Okay, we're finished with that. Thank you very much, Ms. Warman. Supervisor Stokes, you can continue. Yes, sir. I, I didn't get to make a comment. Thank you. I'll just be a minute. My name is Celeste Ramirez. Thank you. Uh, Charlotte Mullen has worked for 23 years at, at the library. I worked for 20, and she's been my mentor for 20 years. And I just wanted to shed some light on, um, she mentioned that we pro protested and we did. Um, and so 20 of us went to the library board meeting. This was comprised of three <coughs> taxpayers and 17 employees. And our only question was not demanding to give her the job. It was why was she not allowed to apply? Because Mrs. Uh, Kirkendall went on Mr. Evers' radio show, and Mr. Evers said, well, why didn't Charlotte get the job? And Ms. Kirkendall said, because she didn't apply. Well, this was a fact, but it was not the truth, because Charlotte was in the process, in the process of applying, and I can prove this, because I was with her, and I said, Charlotte, when you apply, you've got to remember all the initiatives, the Books for Tots initiative, the um, Java and Jazz, the writers, and all of these programs that Charlotte had come up with and no one else had. And I said, you need to explain, you know, some of this. Explain Books for Tots, how you got Michael Jordan's mother to come for free, because she believed in what you were doing. And Charlotte was never acknowledged for any of that. The beauty and the simplicity of her initiatives is she makes them simple. She includes everybody. But I guess I'm getting off topic. We went and one of the taxpayers stood up and wanted to know why she was not allowed to apply. And Mrs. Kirkendall said, we're not going to talk about this. Now she said this to a taxpayer. When you have 17 employees, I guess she feels she can treat us anyway, but not the taxpayer. So I stood up and I said, yeah, we will talk about it. We all want to know why Charlotte wasn't allowed to apply. And she said, we will move on now. And they dismissed the meeting without ever hearing us. So my request 
to open up an investigation on her behalf. I just want them to tell you, Mr. Stokes, why? Why wasn't she allowed? Because until they can... Well, they're just things we don't talk about anymore in polite society, but here it goes. I see it as Jim Crow. I see it as Jim Crow. If they will do it to her, a woman who is qualified to work at any library in the United States, except for the one library that doesn't want her that she's trying to help, then what is it? If they can't say, well, she wasn't hired for this, then tell, tell me what? Because I see it as Jim Crow. I see it as them shoving it under the rug, taking a woman who's more than qualified and not letting her apply. So will you help us find the answer? Yes, ma'am, and that's one reason we placed this item on the agenda because it was brought to my attention she was not allowed to apply. And they shut the time and date that it was uh, given for her to apply. And they just cut it off. And you, you can't do that. So, you know, we'll be glad to do what I did to probably find because we are part of the funding agency. Yes, sir. I know. Application as to why, especially with us giving uh, giving money to the library system, you can't stop a person from being able to apply. Now you don't have to hire them, right. but you got to be given a chance to apply. Well, then isn't that what was done in the fifties, where qualified people could work as doctors and nurses and leaders, and they weren't allowed to apply? Yeah, I agree. So sixty years later. Jim Crow rears his head again, and we're just supposed to accept what she says, that we're not going to talk about it. And if they will do that to her, what will they do to me for speaking up? Absolutely. Amen. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very much uh, for coming up. Uh, Supervisor Stokes, continue. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I, I want to go to the jail administrator issue, Mr. President, if I can. Okay. Uh, Mr. President, on the first page of the report, there was a court order for us to enact the recommendations of Dr. Austin and the state beginning as soon as possible. Now, Mr. President, it's been almost this happened to say.